Hello and welcome to yet another exciting video. This video is an interesting one as we are going to touch on brands that were once infamous and coveted and are now irrelevant and have stagnated and ultimately met their demise. As Isaac Newton's second law in physics stated, what comes up must go down. Okay. The brands that I will be talking about here are brands that I was personally a big fan of and I grew up with as I was getting into fashion developing my own style. For these brands to become irrelevant, there are important and common factors that played a huge role as to why these brands fell off. One factor is the shift in fashion in terms of style and trends. People's taste in fashion has taken a turn from bold and loud designs into a more casual, at leisure and quiet luxury style. Looking back into the mid 2010s, it is a must to wear pieces with overly saturated logos and branding on the outside to make a statement. It is somewhat a bragging right to show and tell the people around you what you are wearing if it's not too obvious already, given the huge logo and text imprinted on the outside. And also to make a statement that you paid this X amount of price for the said pieces. Like I said, a bragging right. Unfortunately, this make a statement bold look took a downhill turn around 2020 during the pandemic when most people are contained at home and the shift in fashion turned into to something more cozy, hence the at leisure style we know today. It is also surprising to see the uprise trend in quiet luxury where most people prefer the simple yet elegant look which is the complete opposite of the mid-2010s trend. Another reason why these brands went south is the trendsetters such as the celebrities and fashion icons adopted the new fashion style, evolving from the bold and loud to the casual, cozy and subtle look. This influence is not only due to the celebrities but also due to the power of TikTok where most fashion creators joined the movement adopting the at leisure, quiet luxury, and Y2K aesthetics. That said, the power of TikTok should not be undermined as one of the biggest influence as to the downfall of the brands on this list that paved a way for the brands to rise in popularity. The first brand on this list that is beloved by many including myself is none other than Supreme. Supreme is a cultural staple when it comes to fashion and has reigned supreme in the street we're seen in the 2010s. Although it has not been nearly as powerful now as it was six or seven years ago. The brand banked on its simple box logo designed with Supreme branding. Supreme has also banked on making much of its profit from collaborations with other brands such as the North Face but recent drops from Supreme had sat online for days if not longer. This is a good indication that there is a loss of interest in the brand as Supreme drops are known to be sold in a matter of seconds in the past. Also VF Corp, the company who bought Supreme in 2020 for 2.1 billion dollars has reported that the the brand has not reached its revenue goal of $600 million, but rather somewhere below $450 million. It is worth noting that Supreme, as I said, being a cultural staple brand, will remain as one of the biggest brands on the planet. And all big fashion brands like Supreme go through a phase, and in a few years, I won't be surprised if we are all talking about and wearing Supreme again. Next on the list that I was once a fan of is the Supreme Wannabe Antisocial Social Club. This streetwear brand was founded in 2015 by Nick Lurk that shed some light on mental health and depression. The brand soared in popularity when Kanye was seen wearing the hoodie and became the sought after streetwear brand by 2016. The brand was nothing out of the ordinary as I said it was basically a supreme wannabe whose designs were just the big antisocial social club text imprinted on the back of its tees and hoodies. What killed the brand besides loss of interest was it was not able to meet and handle the demand where products were slow to ship, taking months. And to make matters worse, Antisocial Club's founder was flexing his Lamborghinis on Instagram, something that I personally think was shady. A baiting ape or better known as Bape was one if not the most influential and most worn streetwear brand in pop culture in the 90s and throughout 2000s. But today, Bape seemed to have lost its touch and is dead. The once recognizable design now just looks like every generic streetwear design. It is somewhat hard to comprehend knowing that this brand was worn by all of the most influential people such as Kanye West, Pharrell Williams, and the like, and yet it has not maintained its relevance in today's current fashion scene. One primary reason for Bape's demise is its original, loud, and multicolor designs which we know is not the it look right now. Moreover, what I think really stagnated the brand's design and direction is the absence of Nigo, the founder of Bape, when he sold the brand to a Chinese company in 2011. I feel like if Bape was under the supervision of Nigo, it would have been relevant to this day knowing how much influence and success Nigo had when it comes to streetwear and fashion in general. This next brand was one of my favorite brands back in 2013 and still is my favorite brand to this day. Billionaire Boys Club has close ties with Bape since the brand was founded by both Nigo and Pharrell Williams in 2003. And some of Billionaire Boys Club's designs share the same similar design of that of Bape. But it is known for its iconic astronaut spaceman motif and iconic arch 
Aztec logo becoming a streetwear and music industry staple. The brand was a success given Pharrell's connections and Nigo's vision, but there was the issue of exclusivity of the pieces that in turn hiked the prices which were passed on to the consumers. One of the brand's major setbacks was definitely the financial crisis in 2008. With the brand's higher price tag and limited availability, it was faced with finding ways to cheaply manufacture its pieces to meet the demand resulting in people losing interest. All in all, I think Billionaire Boys Club like Supreme has its face right now. After all, I still like its very plain and muted designs that are still iconic to this day. This next brand is one of the hottest if not the hottest brand in the last few years and calling it iconic would be an understatement. Off-White was definitely known for its iconic text designs in close in quotation marks thanks to Virgil Abloh. This is truly remarkable to think how much influence and impact it had with such plain designs. I mean, altering a regular tee or shoe and imprinting a text on it to state the obvious and slap a thousand dollar price tag on it is just absurd and beyond comprehension. But it really is the influence that Virgil had that made such an impact. Virgil truly had an amazing vision in terms of design. I mean, his designs were too simple and plain, yet none of us had thought about it. And since his passing, Off-White as a brand has not had the same influence, hence the death of the brand. Drake's October's very own, or better known as OVO, is known for its iconic OWL logo. OVO has definitely established itself in the streets we're seeing due to Drake's influence as an artist. I cannot forget the time when everyone in my circle of friends wanted an OVO tee and hoodie with the signature all logo on it. And we would make the iconic praying pose Bruh. in our photos referencing Drake's if you're reading this, it's too late album cover. Although OVO as a brand has become stale and has lost its cult following despite Drake's ever increasing fame. People have just gotten over and have favored less the big prominent bold logo that OVO boasts in most of its designs. Despite OVO having collaborated with big names in the industry, as just Drake's album, nothing was the same. What? The death of Yeezy and Adidas is not a surprise. We all know that when Kanye and Adidas parted ways last year, it was the end of an era. For one, we know how influential Kanye is in the designs he makes. His design may look absurd, but we have to admit that the absurdity of his designs is the element that makes his designs stand out and the ethos of Yeezy as a whole. But Yeezy is nothing without Adidas, and to make matters worse, most of Kanye's designs are owned and trademarked by Adidas, and in the same way, Adidas is not the brand they are today without Kanye. I know that is a bold statement, but it is true. Kanye being the face of Adidas brought Adidas back to the sneaker ball game. And after cutting ties with Kanye, Adidas projected a loss of almost a billion dollars and the company's profit fell 83% after the split with Yeezy. That is a huge blow considering the many offerings that Adidas have in their lineup, but none of those come close to the Yeezy line. Recently, Adidas, to save itself from extinction, has agreed to pay Kanye royalties to sell the remaining inventory of Yeezy products. The first set of Yeezys released this past month in May, but after the soured relationship between Yeezy and Adidas, this move by Adidas was a slap to their face and not very many are enthusiastic with the recent Yeezy drops anymore as opposed to prior to the split. Last but not the least is the swoosh brand. Nike. I know what y'all are thinking, there's no way Nike is dead or dying anytime soon, but hear me out. This might be a reach, but according to Hype Beast, Nike is seeking new innovation since their product lineup is becoming stale. At this point, we all know that Nike is only banking on Air Jordan 1s, Nike Dunks, Air Maxes, and many re-retros. And with the recent shifts in the sneaker industry, what once coveted Air Jordan 1 that has fetched profitable returns in the resale market has now become overstocked due to saturated colorways and the same old retros, which some are now selling for under retail. And let's be honest, much of what most people wear now in the current fashion scene has not been Jordan 1s or Dunks. Most people yield toward wearing runners, dad shoes, trail running shoes such as the Salomon XT6 and anything of the like. Jordan 1s and the Nike Dunks will always be iconic and will be wanted by people. But in hindsight, this is not where the interest lies and what the people want. And if Nike does not come up with something, they will eventually lose to other sneaker brands that are on the come up. My biggest takeaway from this video as a fashion enthusiast is how hard it is for a brand to sustain itself for longevity. There's no one solution to sustainability as fashion trends change fast in a moment's notice and fashion trends are definitely 
influenced by many factors and it's not viable for many brands to always jump on every trend that comes along. This is a trade-off that brands usually have to compromise with that comes with the price. But fashion is just revolving around and being irrelevant for the time being is not necessarily a bad thing as it could only be a phase. Look at Stussy for example. Stussy was irrelevant for quite some time until it sparked interest from the fashion community recently and it has now become the coveted piece of streetwear right now. We just never really know what ends up in the mix of trends. And there you guys have it for the brands that are officially dead as of this year and are dying. What are your thoughts about the brands I spoke about on this video? I am inclined to know so share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like this video, smash the like button to help the channel and a brother out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did and until next time, stay safe, stay fitted, peace.